can, um, I will just, how many witnesses? Alan. I'm sorry. We're starting to hear him with Mr. Coleman right now. It's okay. Um, and so, <clears throat> Mr. Merchant <clears throat> is charged with the second degree felony offense of aggravated assault um, with a deadly weapon or with a weapon. April 16, 2023. It's a knife. Oh, and a firearm. There's two paragraphs. <clears throat> one is exhibited a deadly weapon, a firearm, and one was a knife. So both. And Mr. Rennick is here, and uh, we reset this to today so that we could have witness on an application for writ of habeas corpus seeking bail reduction. Current bond is set at two hundred and fifty thousand. Mr. Rennick, you may proceed. Sure. Um, at this time, I would like to call uh, Ann Merchant. Uh, okay. Testify. Yeah, I guess. Just have a seat at council table. <clears throat> You're okay. You can sit in that, just that last chair right there would be perfect. Oh, wherever she tells you. I was just kidding. Good morning, ma'am. Could you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. All right. Thank you. You may proceed. Ms. Merchant, will you state your name for the record? Ms. Merchant, what is your relationship to the defendant, Shea Merchant? Does this matter? Okay. Uh, you understand we're here today. It's basically a bail reduction hearing. You understand that? Yes. And you, want, you know what Mr. Merchant's bond is set at right now. What is that? Okay, $250,000. Was your understanding that his bond was originally set at fifty thousand yeah. dollars? Now, hypothetically, if the bond was set at fifty thousand dollars, you and I have discussed with bond conditions. Is that a number that the family could afford to raise bond and able to allow Mr. Merchant to be out? Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> okay. Um, now, Mr. Merchant, if the judge. Uh, your family is able to reach bond or in this case does mr merchant have a place to live <clears throat> and is that with you or another family member i think okay and where do you reside in cleveland texas okay and does he have a job also waiting for him from my understanding he worked at a walmart distribution center is that right no but he does have an offer there okay so he does have uh, employment there to so help out with the bond or any fees related to his defense. Is that correct? Okay. And regarding the family support system, other than yourself, are there other family members that would be able to support Mr. Merchant, make sure he complies with any bond condition, make sure he reports for work, things of that nature? Yes, he has a cousin that lives over there in the army, and he has a sister that lives in the army. Okay, so there are other family members. Yes. And uh, you're not here, you don't know anything about this case, you're not here to testify about this case, but you are here to inform the court. The family does want to raise money for a bond because there is a support system around him. Is that correct? Yes. Now, again, uh, if the judge puts the bond back to his original of $2,000, is that a sign? I know. There are financial conditions you talked about or strains with your family, but is that a sum of money that you feel that the family can raise? Most likely. Okay. All right. I'm going to pass this with us. I have no questions for Ms. Murphy. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You can go have a seat. Any other witnesses? No other witnesses, Jeff. So let me just make sure. No, I have my complaints here. With you do? Okay, go ahead then. Uh, call your uh, first witness. No, at this time, the state will call Tammy Engel. All right, Ms. Engel, Tammy Engel. I'm trying to figure out why the bond went from one thing to the other uh, in the first place. So it looks like, from what I can tell, there was. An initial magistration done. They don't have a All right. Would you like for a test from the witness stand or you have to right there is fine. Give me just a second before you start. Okay. Let me yes, just ma'am. look at something. So it looks like the first one was done. 
just as maybe the regular magistration order because there was a protective order done that morning as well on what'd you say the 7th 17. 17. 17. Gotcha. Can't, I wish um, I need to get them to I need to get the magistrates to print their names. <laughs> I can tell who I'm trying to figure out who did what. And then it looks like there was an actual arrest warrant issued the next day, possibly. And that was sent to Judge Templeton. And he signed an actual arrest warrant on this, well, April 16th. That's the, he must have set that bond. Is the 16th the day that it changed? The day after. But nothing happened in between. It was just, I believe, throughout the police took it to a judge for an arrest, another arrest warrant. Indicted until May 10th. All right, ma'am, would you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Could you please state your full name for the record? Uh, Tammy Chanel Ingle. And uh, how are you employed as a police officer for the city of Florida? How long have you been employed uh, as a police officer with uh, PD? Seven years. And uh, I don't need the address, but please tell the Judge, where are you, what city uh, state you reside? Or up in Texas. Okay. Do you know the defendant, Shay Allen Merchant? Yes. Because uh, I want to my identify by the article code. Um, and you want to say? Yeah, all right, ask the record reflect the witnesses identify the defendant. Uh, the record will so reflect. How uh, do you know Shay Allen Merchant? Uh, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, how long did the two of you date? Uh, almost two years. And uh, did the two of you cohabitate? Yes. And were you cohabitating? Back in uh, April uh, of uh, 2023? Yes. Uh, and on April the 16th, what, if anything, transpired between two? Uh, he called me from the living room while I was in the bedroom and demanded that I go get him a can of snuff. I declined and hung the phone up on him. He got angry. He called me back. I got out of bed, I gave him $20, told him to get it himself. He told me he was going to start breaking stuff if I didn't go do it. So I got up and I went and did it. When I got back, he had damaged my patrol car and was throwing, I made custom uh, tumblers, and he was throwing them in the driveway so that way I could not pull fully into the driveway. He met me in the driveway with a gun, which he put to the uh, my left head right here and forced me inside the residence. Isn't it true that he actually dragged you into the residence? Yes, yes, he uh, had grabbed me by my arm. Uh, how did you get into the He had grabbed me by my arm and forced me into the uh, into the garage, which he shut it, making me leave all of my purse and belongings in my car and told me that he hopes they all got stolen. Uh, once you got into the residence, did he put his hands on you? He had um, told me that I needed to take my self to bed. So I went and laid down in bed. And that's when he had gotten a knife out. And he had placed the knife against my neck, uh, causing a small abrasion. Did he choke at some point? And then... Um, he had walked out, so I had went into the bathroom. He had then pulled me into the bathroom and choked me several times in the bathroom, picking me up on my throat and throwing me against the window seal, bruising my back. Did he at some point punch you with a closed fist? Yes. Did he bite you? Yes, he bit me on my nose. Um, showing you what's been previously marked as space exhibit number one. Do you recognize this? Yes. What do you recognize it to be? Those are the marks from this is from the knife and this is from him choking me. A fair, is this a fair and accurate uh, depiction of how your neck appeared uh, on the day of the incident? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, I'd offer state's one out for purposes of written opinion. It's not for this case. No, Judge. It's admitted. Was this the, uh, did you require medical treatment? Yes, I went to the hospital. Okay. Did you flee the residence? Uh, after I had told him what he wanted to hear, so he calmed down. 
um, I was able to leave the residence and that was when I called the police department. You called your own department? Yes. You made a report with the APD? Yes. Showing you what's been marked as state exhibit number two. Do you have another report? Yes, it's the firearm you put to my head. It's a fair and accurate depiction of the firearm that did? Yes. Uh, at this time, I'd offer stage two. Approaches the record between the defense counsel for this patient. No objection. To that end. Um, did you uh, give PAPD a written statement uh, reflecting what you testified here to today? Yes. Uh, was this the first, uh, was this the only incident of violence between the two of you? No. Um, and, and I want to interrupt you here. We're not here to have a full-blown trial, but I just want, I'm asking you to give the uh, judge at least a picture, an idea of the nature of the relationship. So this wasn't the only time. No. This is not the only time. Please briefly give the judge an idea. Of any past incidents? Um, there had been instances when I had caught him cheating, and then he had been physically abusive towards me by punching me. Um, he had bit my ear and my forehead back in October. Um, then also three, two or three days prior to the 16th, when all of this took place, he had, um, while I was laying in bed, taken a knife and like cut the bed around and poke holes in the mattress above my head, um, <laughs> making threats to harm me. Did he carve anything in, in the walls of your residence? Yes. Objection leaving. Overruled. What, 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 what did he do? He, he, he had poked several holes in the wall and in the bed, and he also carved um, F, the N word, into the my bedroom wall. Um, let's go back to April 16th of 2023. I neglected to ask you about. Uh, was it an incident involving his blood? Yes, he also, during that whole incident, had cut himself on his arm like twice with my duty knife and then had, was smearing his blood all over me. Um, and then he also took that knife and he cut my hair. Has CPS been involved with the duty? Yes, he on Wednesday, that Wednesday prior to the incident tried to sick the, our pit bull dogs on CPS. Which is what, so when I got home from placing my kid after CPS took my kid, um, I had told him to get out of the residence. And then that's when the violent behavior progressed until the Sunday. Uh, around this time, did he send you uh, some text messages? Yes, he had sent me several text messages mm -hmm. while I was visiting my my child. Again, briefly give the judge some idea of the nature of those text messages. Um, that he should have threatened, he should have slit my throat. Um, that he was gonna kill me. Is it fair to say they were profane? Yes. Uh, is it fair to say that they threatened you in, 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 in a number of ways? Absolutely. Uh, he also threatened to harm my brother and sister-in-law who I was with, which is who I placed my son with after he had gotten a CPS taken. Did you uh, provide those text messages to law enforcement? Yes. Uh, you understand why we're here today, correct? Yes. Uh, this defendant is seeking to lower his $250,000 bond, correct? Yes. What do you want this judge to know? Uh, well, first of all, how did that those text messages and the incident back on April the 16th of 2023 make you feel? Uh, I was scared for my life. And uh, if this defendant were to get out of jail or be released on a reduced bond, uh, what is what if any concerns do you have? Uh, I, I fear for my life. If, if he gets out of jail, I I have a five-year protective order. He has sent me letters from the jail. He has tried to email me I'm from sorry, the jail. Know, since the protective, since order, the protective order has been in place, he has mailed me two letters from the jail and tried to email me from the jail email since the protective order has been in place. So it's fair to say he's violated the terms of the protection. Yes. Even while he's in this. Yes. Tells if you think this judge needs to know before she makes a decision about whether or not to reduce this or reduce this. Uh, I just strongly fear for my life that he is going to retaliate against me. He made threats to harm both of my kids, <clears throat> even during the incident, and I'm scared. That's all I have to do. Pass the witness. Any questions, Mr. Reddy? Yes, just a few. Uh, Ma'am, a few questions. Other than this incident in which you contacted authorities, how many other times have you called the police? Related to alleged violence. I haven't called the police. 
So this is the first time you've ever called the police. Is that fair? That's fair. Okay. And at your residence, who resides at your residence at this time other than yourself and Mr. Merchant? Um, Mr. Merchant's been evicted from the residence. Right. Prior to that time. Or it's me and my other, my kids. Okay. Anyone else? No. Okay. And is it also true that after this happened, uh, did you yourself start calling other bonds companies and informing them? No, I did not. Did your ex-husband call bond companies and start making comments about Mr. Merchant? He may have, but I did not. Okay. You understand you're under oath, correct? Yes. Are you aware of your husband calling bond it's companies? Not, it's my ex-husband. Your ex-husband calling yes, bond I'm companies? Yes, I'm aware that that's what he did. So when you said you were aware, maybe he did, maybe did not, that was not a truthful statement, was it? You are aware that your ex-husband was calling around town to different bond companies and making negative comments about Mr. Merchant, correct? Yes. Okay. So why did you not answer truthfully to my first question? I don't know that I didn't answer truthfully. I'll pass it on my questions. I have no further questions from the single, John. Thank you, ma'am. You can um, have a seat or step. Two uh, short ones. All right. I called Michael Engel at this time. Michael Engel? That's right. How are you not standing? She is the mother of my youngest uh, son, as well as we were married for 15 years. And uh, when did the, you say we're married? When did the two of you divorce? The exact date, I couldn't tell you, uh, sir, uh, approximately four years ago. Okay. And do you recognize uh, the individual here in the orange jumpsuit? Yes, sir, I do. Who do you know him to? Shay Allen Merchant. And, um, <clears throat> Let's just cut to the chase. How, uh, what has been the nature of your involvement or interaction with uh, Shea Merchant? It has been very stressful and threats uh, provided by Mr. Merchant. Threats uh, to directed toward them? Uh, directly towards myself and my nine year old son. Okay. And uh, back on December the 10th of 2021, uh, did you have an occasion to speak with the defendant on the telephone? Uh, yes, sir. I received a phone call approximately 5.30 to 6 a.m. Uh, in the morning. And, uh, during that uh, phone conversation, uh, what, if anything, did he say to you? During the, the original phone call conversation, there was uh, se uh, several threats provided uh, to myself uh, by Mr. Merchant. And... Uh, after that initial call from him, did you call who did did you call him? Yes, sir. Uh, once uh, the phone call disconnected, I uh, turned around and called uh, my ex-wife to inform her of what was taking place. Did she answer the phone? Uh, no, sir. She did not. Who answered the phone? Shay Merchant answered the phone. And how did that call go? Uh, st uh, started by yelling, screaming, and threats uh, by Mr. Merchant uh, with continuous uh, threats, not only towards myself as well as towards my nine year old son. Was that, uh, did you record that phone call? Yes, sir, I did. I'm handing you what's been marked Stacey Zipper number three. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir, I do. It's the uh, CD that has the recording on it. The recorded phone call from December the 10th of 2021 between you and the defendant. Yes, sir, that is correct. Um, you've listened to this recording. Is it a fair and accurate recording? Yes, sir, it's very accurate. Uh, made by a device or a cell phone that was capable of making an accurate recording? Yes, sir, that and is correct. And you certainly knew how to properly operate your cell phone, correct? Yes, sir. Now, at this time, I'd offer states three. I'm going to object that has not been provided to the defense. We have requested discovery and we have not received any recordings from the state. So I, we reset this hearing to provide Mr. Cole the opportunity to bring witnesses forward and objecting to him presenting an audio recording something that has not been provided to us and we've not had the opportunity to review. Judge, I only received this recording within the last day or so. Okay. That's yeah, fine. So, well, and I, the testimony as far as what kind of went on back then i'll i'll take that but i'll sustain the objection um during the uh, phone call did the defendant make derogatory statements about you or your family 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, again, it's uh, myself as well as my nine-year-old son. What did he call your nine-year-old? He called my nine-year-old son uh, retarded. Did he threaten to kill you? Yes, sir. Was this the only instance of any uh, threats or uh, harassment by this defendant directed toward you? Uh, no, sir. The following Saturday when I met uh, Tammy to pick up my son in the Hobby Lobby parking lot, uh, Mr. Merchant uh, got out of the vehicle and uh, started to attack me, Tammy, and a law enforcement officer had to uh, pull him off of me. Uh, did you file charges as it relates with the law enforcement as it relates to the threats that were made on the phone call? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, ultimately, did you file uh, what's referred to as a non prosecution uh, affidavit? Yes, sir, I did. Why did you do that? I did that after talking with Tammy and her expressing the stress and hardship that it was putting on her household as well as uh, the stress on my nine-year-old son in uh, that household. I felt that it relieved the stress and the tension and uh, violence uh, within that household to drop the prosecution of it, to, uh, hoping that it would uh, help relieve the situation that was within the household. In fact, you found that non-prosecution affidavit doesn't in any way uh, negate or uh, indicate that what we testified to that had transpired after that. That is correct. Uh, that is correct, sir. Uh, are you concerned about the safety uh, of your? Uh, are you concerned? Uh, yes, sir. I'm very concerned. Uh, not only am I concerned for uh, Tammy as well as my nine year old son and my 18 year old stepson that lives in the household. And you understand we're here today on the bond reduction. Uh, the defense counsel is asking to consider lowering this defendant's two hundred fifty thousand dollars bond. Uh, what would you like for the judge to consider or know uh, with it in that regard? I'd like you to know the fact that since uh, Mr. Merchant has been uh, locked up, there has been uh, several threats uh, exchanged as well as violation of the protective order for my two boys as well as uh, Tammy by uh, not only uh, literature communication, phone communication, as well as communication from family members that he has uh, had to contact uh, my ex-wife. The uh, mail uh, correspondence is still taking place and it violates the five-year protective order that the judge has signed and put in place. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you. Right, so just a few questions. First of all, you have expressed to the court that you have concerns about your safety related to Mr. Merchant, correct? That is correct. Of course, you also testified to that he allegedly committed a crime uh, against you, correct? That is correct. And you also uh, informed the court that you were so concerned you filed an affidavit of non-prosecution. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And you've also taken upon yourself to contact various bond companies and things of that nature, basically to slander my client is that correct contact and correct uh slander no sir were you calling to talk about what a wonderful human being was when he called him when you called him i was calling to prevent him from bombing another jail okay so my question is so you were calling basically to defame my client to slander his name to various bond companies that did not contact you is that correct sir slander is uh stating something that is not correct uh, okay. i stated what is correct if we're going to place the main thing thing i can do that all, all right no we're not going to go so, there just he's answered the question okay. ask another question all right i'll pass the witness to all right. i have nothing further for this witness y'all all right thank you sir yeah. for coming you can sit down you know, i briefly called troy robinson to the stand. all right mr robinson good morning Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the court's familiar with you, uh, but for the purpose of the record, how are you employed? Jefferson County District Attorney's Office and as, how, as an investigator. And how long have you been with the DA's office? Five and a half years. Okay. Uh, have you familiarized yourself with the criminal history uh, of this defendant, Shane Merchant? Yes, I have. And um, briefly, what does it consist of? Uh, multiple. Uh, arrests, some that have been dismissed, some that have not been 
consist of aggravated assault, harassment, interference with emergency, terroristic threat. Uh, should be noted that looks like they're from this uh, criminal history. There's still a warrant for Mr. Merchant for terroristic threat out of uh, Carrizo, C A R R I Z O, Springs, Texas, from 2004. Is it fair to say he has criminal history out of the state of Texas and the state of California? That is correct. And is, it, is it fair to say? How would you characterize the criminal history overall, uh, in, in the nature of those types of offenses? Uh, pretty consistent with uh, his current charge. A lot of uh, you know, emergency interference with emergency contact, terroristic threats, harassments. Um, very consistent with what's going on here today. So, the current say he's got an interference with emergency phone call, two terroristic threats, and a ransom charge. The say. Yes, sir. Making what California refers to as an annoying phone call. That's correct. It's uh, uh, committing the offense under California law that says they refer to it as threatening a crime with the intent to terrorize. That's correct. Okay. Was he convicted of that particular? Yes, he was. That's all I have, Judge. Is there any record that shows that Mr. Merchant said that he convicted of a felony previous? I'm not sure what the California. But can I can I represent to you I've, from the documents that I've been shared with from the state? There's nothing that reflects that there was a previous felony conviction of any type. Are you aware of it being a felony conviction? I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just saying that there's nothing that has been reflected of any previous felony conviction. No, the only one that I had an issue with was the one that was from California that does list as a felony severity with a threat crime with intent to terrorize. He was convicted of that. Um, the way that there's come out, it said plea to another charge, but I'm not. So again, there's no record he's been convicted of a felony previously that you're aware of. I would agree with that. Okay. I have no question. I have nothing further for this witness, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, risk. All right, I have a question about um, <clears throat> initial uh, magistration that was done. There's a notation about something from a Dimmitt County cash bond any, any idea what Dimmitt County pending charges or anything like that from Dimmitt County? Did you find anything, Mr. Yeah, Robinson? I'm going to speak to that, Judge. He has a uh, 2012 terroristic threat out of, at least according to the criminal history, uh, that's, that's out of Dimmitt County. Uh, there were two offenses there. He received a fine. Two charges of terroristic threat. He received a fine on one. That would be in cause number DC120. 20278, and then in the other companion case, DC 1202283, it indicated that it was dismissed. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming the Carrizo Springs that. And that's the that County? Dimmit, yes. Okay. Yeah, it is. It says uh, uh, Dimmit County, Carrizo Springs. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other witnesses? Not for the touch. Not for the touch. All right, go ahead with the argument, Mr. Um, Your Honor, just very briefly. Uh, clearly, the allegations uh, against my client are quite salacious, but the fact is, we have a gentleman that has never been convicted previously of a felony, uh, regardless of the relationship that he had with the complainant in this. This is the first time that this police officer has related to any incident. All right, thank you, Mr. Coleman. Your Honor, we have the ingredients here for something tragic to transpire. Uh, the ingredients consisting of this defendant's criminal history, uh, which is indicative of someone with uh, at a minimum anger issues and at most uh, issues uh, with violence. Uh, we also have the ingredient of some very serious allegations here brandishing a firearm, holding a knife to someone's threat, throat, and threatening to, to kill them. And lastly, the last ingredient of this is judge, we've got a defendant who even from the jail with a pending protective order is violating that order. Uh, he has he's demonstrated a lack of respect for the law, a uh, lack of respect for court order. Uh, judge, the, all those ingredients, uh, they are a recipe for something tragic to happen. And this court, uh, under the Code of Criminal Procedure, can consider the <coughs> public safety as one of those factors. Uh, in setting a reasonable bond, the state's position is that a six-figure bond in this case is not unreasonable. We'd ask that the, the court deny the, the, the defense motion to uh, decrease uh, or to reduce the defendant's bond for those reasons, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you.
Anything else? No, no. So based on all of the evidence that was presented um, today, uh, as well as, I don't know if everybody, y'all y'all all know me and y'all know what I do during these hearings and I'll typically keep my eyes on the defendant, um, the facial expressions, the attitude uh, of Mr. Merchant. I believe is absolutely in line with what Mr. Coleman has said. I'm going to deny that uh, writ and, or deny that and the bond I think is appropriate. It says what it's set at. We'll get this set for an announcement and we'll see where the case goes. Thank you. Y'all are excused. Was this on a writ to you? All parties and attorneys can please state their name and appearance for the record, starting with the plaintiff, Shaw. Shauna Hardwick. Your name, sir? Javante Hamilton. Good afternoon, everyone. This matter is being done by remote technology. The contents of this video may be the official record of the proceeding of the state of Michigan's Ninth Judicial Circuit. Unauthorized duplication, distribution, alteration of said content is strictly prohibited. Today's date and time set for a objection to the referee's recommended order. Um, it was filed in this case by Mr. Hamilton. Mr. Hamilton, there was a referee's hearing that you did not appear for. Uh, it was based on your motion, correct? Correct. Okay, and you said you had notice. You didn't have notice. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Well, it was only a three-minute hearing, so basically, it looks like the referee dismissed your motion because you weren't there. Any problem with refiling your motion? No. That's you are capable of doing that, and you are able to do that. It was the referee's recommended order. Uh, Miss Hardwick, you were there. It looks like it went on the record at 11.12 and ended at 11.15, and she just dismissed the motion filed by Mr. Hamilton, correct? Correct. Okay. So I'm going to uphold the referee's order. If you want to file your motion exactly as is, again, you can do that, okay? Okay. So well, for some reason... Doing that? For some reason, I didn't get it. I think because I had an address change, I just simply didn't okay, get did it. Did you update the court? Yes, I did. Okay. What is your is Are you on? Are you a Candlewick now? Yes, I am, and I know, I, and I made that change before then. But for some reason, the um objection came to my old address. So okay, I'm not sure what. Yeah, I'm not sure what well, happened there. She didn't take testimony. She just said, you're not here. I'm dismissing your motion. So if you want to refile it, you can. If you two want to work something out, you can, okay? So I have to pay a $100 again? You can ask for a waiver of fees if you want. Make sure that gets to me. Okay. But, yeah, Miss... Miss uh, I don't want Miss Hardwick to miss school out of work. I don't know if you work, ma'am, but if you're going to file something, we got to make sure you're here to do the hearing, okay? Okay. Uh, it's for both of you. So if you okay. file something, make sure you're here. But now that we have your address updated, shouldn't be a problem. But the referee didn't do an evidentiary hearing. It just was your motion was dismissed because you failed to appear. You can make a motion to reinstate that, or you can file a new motion. It's your decision. You said I could make a motion to reinstate that. What is that supposed to mean? That That's when you can say there was a reason why you weren't here. I'm not sure if that'll be granted or not. Or you could just yeah, file I, a motion. No, no, I did that already. This is why we're on the video call. We were set up for a voice call, but they did the, they turned it into this voice, this video call so that we can fix the problem. Okay. All I know is that the referee did a three-minute hearing, and the only reason you were dismissed your motion on June 25th, 2021, is because you failed to appear. And therefore, you couldn't sustain your burden of proof. 
So you can refile and you can ask for a waiver of, the t of fees if you choose to do so. So see, see, but I already, I already did this. They already wrote a whole motion and everything. I, I wrote an appeal already. You I already did an appeal. I already went through all of this. That's why we're on the video. I don't understand. I did the. What part don't you understand? I, I already did this. And my kids are not about to be in school because of this. They're not in school in Indiana. And then now we're setting this back some more. They're going to miss school some more for a second year so straight. You filed, hold on. On April 2nd, you filed a motion to change custody, correct? Yes. Okay. That's the one you didn't show up for. Right. So I did a appeal and, and 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 they set this up. Yeah, the, yeah, you filed an objection to the referee recommended order, and that's what I'm doing today. I'm listening to your objection. You don't have a legal reason why you didn't show up for the, the hearing. Because you guys didn't send it to me. You guys sent it to my you guys didn't send it to me. I didn't receive it at all. That's not fair. I didn't receive Are it. The, the, the only letter okay. that I received. Are you at 306 Candlewick? I didn't have that yes, they didn't have they they didn't have nothing correct. They didn't send it to me. They didn't Did send it to me. Did you update the courts immediately when you moved? Immediately, immediately. I immediately the, my old address should not even have been on file anymore. They sent they sent the um okay. What I'll do they, is I'll set this, I'll have this matter set with the referee again. Okay. So, so what's that about? You're going to have your hearing. You both better show up. You'll get it set. It's not for today to be set. Right. Okay. So, I, I have a concern okay. because every, every child my son age is starting school today. He's not in school. He's here with me. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to figure out if I could get him in school tomorrow or, or what's going on. He, he's already missed the whole year last year. Because he won't give the kids back. Okay. So the last order is in place. Who's supposed to have the children? Me, but he won't return the kids to me. Sir, is the order supposed to be with her? Give me the last yep. order, please print it out. Yes, but he won't Sir? return the kids. I tried to get them the last couple of weeks and he won't give them back. Okay. Sir, are, where does the kids order to be? They are to be with her, but she hasn't came and gotten them. She doesn't have any gas. You won't let me. I don't give me gas money. Oh okay. my goodness. You won't let me. I tried to get them for a Stop couple of weeks. It. Stop of it, both of you. Do not say a word to each other. Ma'am, stop it. Am I clear? Okay. Good. Sir, the order says she's supposed to have the children. You say she won't come get her. Let's set up a time to exchange the children now. Okay, that's fine. Okay. okay. And then I'll get it set with the referee. You both can argue your case, and then a decision can be made as to where the kids, if it'll change. You have the burden, sir. So you say the children are supposed to be with mom. Let's get them to mom so nobody gets in trouble for violating court orders. So you live in Indiana. Where in Indiana? Crawford, still Indiana. Okay. Where do you live, ma'am? Crawfordsville, Indiana. What town? Crawfordsville. And where's that closest city? Uh, Lafayette. Okay, so it's about two and a half hours, right? About, yeah, two and a half to three hours. Okay, the order, I don't have the order in front of me, if you could print that. We're trying to find it. Sir, if you agree the mom should have the children, let's make this happen. So where could you meet in the middle? Can both of you meet in the middle to exchange the children? Yeah, um, I can meet in Michigan City tomorrow. Sir, can you meet in Michigan City tomorrow? Um, she's about four hours away. Uh, I don't think I can drive to Michigan City. I work 12 hour days every day. I will come You're to come with you to get How did you get the time? Ma'am, please, please. 
Okay, sorry. Impress me by, thank you. Sir, if you're off today, when can you get off? When is your next day off? I work, I'm on first shift Monday through Friday. Okay, is that seven to three thirty? Yes, it is. Okay. Can you meet at Michigan City at about seven o'clock at night? Man, that's that's far. I... Well, that's about a that's that's somewhere in the middle of here in Lafayette. Can you do you have a car that can do that? She's in Crawfordsville, Indiana. That's not Lafayette. Lafayette, that's four hours away. Sir, if you can get her to, to get the children to Michigan City, it's her business how to get the children home. I'm going to trust her as a mother to do it safely. So can you meet at 7 o'clock in Michigan City? 7 o'clock in Michigan City. All right. Okay. Ma'am, where in Michigan City? The police station, please. Have you folks met there before? Um, no, but I'm a little afraid for my safety. Do you have an address? I'll um, get it right now. Okay. Yes, it's um, 1201 East Michigan Boulevard, Michigan City. Four six three uh, six zero. Okay, sir, did you get that? Yes. Okay, one two zero one East Michigan Boulevard, Michigan City, Indiana, four six three six zero. We're going to say seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I don't remember if Michigan City is in a different time zone. Okay, how many children are being dropped off? Three. Okay. And then what is his parenting time in the previous court order? Um, just the standard Kalamazoo parenting time. So he gets every other weekend? Yes. And we'll continue to meet in Michigan City at the police station to make sure that happens. Will that work for you, sir? No, I'm afraid for my safety. Shauna um, wants the cops to... Um, that's not a good idea for me. She threatens the cops okay. on me all the time. It's just not a good location for me. I don't feel safe okay. doing that. Well, then where so would you like to me to feel safe? My mom met her at gas stations a few times, something like that. But the police stations, I don't. I'm being threatened enough. I'll, you know, just exchange. Okay. Um. Give me a second. There is a Meyer in Michigan City. Correct? Yes. Okay. Could you meet at the Meyers? Yes, I can. That's a lot safer for me. Oh, okay. So we will, I got the address here of 5150. Franklin Street, Michigan City, Indiana, 46360. Okay. So we'll do the drop off at seven o'clock tomorrow. And after that, all prior orders remain in effect with the exception of if it, I'll put the drop off and pickups will be at seven o'clock at the Meyer in Indiana. Uh, Michigan City, Indiana, okay? Eastern Standard Time. Does that work for everybody? Your yes. Honor, um, what about my safety? Because we have a lot of domestic okay. violence history. Great. You'll meet behind row 15 at the Meyer. You two will have to argue this in the court of law, but I want my orders filed. If there are any issues, I have no problem putting either one of you in jail if you can't follow my orders. Okay. So you'll be behind a, uh, 
what do you call it? Aisle 15 at the Meyer in Indiana on 5150 Franklin Street. You should feel safe at the Meyer. It's public, okay? Okay. Okay. So I just want the children where they're supposed to be. I, I don't mean great that there's a history of domestic violence. I don't know what the truth is. You two need to figure that out in court. Okay. But I want you both, you're in a public place. It's on video. The cameras are there in the parking lot. If he follows you to your car, sir, you're going to have a lot of problems. If you don't show up, ma'am, or I see you harassing him, you're going to have a lot of problems. Okay. I don't play games. Okay. And if you're in jail, ma'am, he's going to have the kids. And sir, if you're in jail, she's going to have the kids. So we're going to yes, get sir. along. If there's enough of a relationship to have three kids, you can be mature for a drop off and pick up that is on video and there are witnesses there. Okay. okay. Yes, Absolutely. Yes, okay. I'm just, I'm not altering the prior order. I'm just doing the seven o'clock drop off and pickups. Okay. I want to get the children okay. following the order. Now, sir, I'll get your motion set back with the referee. They'll notice it out to both of you. That's your chance for both of you to argue what you need to argue to get custody and parenting time of the kids. Okay. Okay. It, it, does, can I does say, that work it, for everybody? Yes, yeah. it does. I just have one concern about their education. Everybody's starting school right now. As far as my acknowledgement, they are not enrolled in school right now. And I'm just worried. I don't know. You know, they missed all school year last year. I'm trying to get them on the education path here. Kalamazoo has a promise. Shauna's a stay-at-home mom. I'm a factory worker. I feel like they could benefit from the Kalamazoo promise in the future. Okay. I'm just I'm I'm really worried about their education right now. And if this is and and if this is pushed out some more, they are gonna miss more education. Every day okay. is critical. Hold Every on. day. Hold on. What are the what are the ages of the children? Two, three, and four. Okay, there is no education requirement for age two, three, and four. The Kalamazoo Promise does not start until kindergarten, first grade. So we're you're way ahead of the curve on there. If they're at daycare or stay at home or preschool, for the four-year-old, that's a possibility. But in the state of Michigan, preschool is not mandated. Okay? Right. Well, our son is, is just kind of behind. Sorry. Okay. I just wanted to. Well, that's. That's unfortunate if that's the case, but there is no mandate for school of two, three, and four. But ma'am, you should have a plan. And sir, if you get custody, you should have a plan. Yes. Okay. So the drop off will occur tomorrow. I'll get this matter reset for fa father's motion to change custody that was dismissed because he failed to appear. We have the address on record. Mistakes may have happened. I don't know. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and we'll set his motion regarding custody that was filed on April 2nd in front of the referee again. Okay. Right. Please behave. If I'm not taking sides, both of you may be great people, but together it seems like it doesn't work so well. So let's get along, admire. Let's get these kids knowing that they're loved by two parents. And then you guys can disagree in private, but I want to make sure the kids know everything's going well and we'll just get these exchanges done at Meyer. okay? Thank you. All right, anything else by anybody? All prior orders not affected today will remain in effect and we will get an order out and please good luck with the exchanges tomorrow.